Hey guys, welcome back to another something in about five minutes and today we are going to be talking all about a basilar skull fracture within trauma and head injuries. So let's get started. So what the heck is a basilar skull fracture? We're going to get into that, but just think this is a skull fracture that is caused by significant trauma to the head. We're talking blunt force trauma from falls and car accidents and uh, you know, getting whacked in the head by something. This is significant head trauma causes these type of basilar skull fractures. Now, we always think basilar skull fracture as the two key signs and symptoms being raccoon eyes and battle signs. We're going to get into that, but first we need to start talking about what the heck, uh, you know, where these skull fractures happen and why those two signs and symptoms happen along with all the other ones that we as EMS providers should be looking out for. Guys, we want to remember that the skull is comprised of about 20 different bones, okay? And these basilar bones are a collection of bones located to the base of the skull, down here, okay? The base of the skull, all right? And this, these collections of bones are so important in protecting a lot of major key structures within the brain, okay, the eyes, the ears, the brain stem, okay, the cerebellum, and the nerves that go into the head and the neck, all right? So all of these are key functions of life, right? So this is a shot of the skull, okay, coming from the top down. So we're looking superior down to inferior, okay? And, um, all of the bones that you see uh, here are your basilar bones, okay? Those collection of bones all at the base of the skull, okay? You have the foramen magnum here, uh, which is, again, the large, uh, you know, hole where your brain stem attaches to your spinal cord, right? That's an important structure there at the base of the skull. That's where your head actually sits on the axis or C1 vertebrae right there. And as well, you also have the two smaller holes here, which are the individual ear canals on the left and the right side respectively. So these come into play specifically when we're talking about battle signs. And we're gonna get to that here in a second. So. Signs and symptoms here. We want to look for blood and or cerebral spinal fluid, CSF, from the nose and the ears. This is going to be either, you know, blood, red liquid, or clearish yellow liquid coming from both ears, one ear, the nostrils. It's going to be coming out of, you know, one of those types of orifices, okay? Now, the two big ones that we always learn, basilar skull fractures, right? Bruising around the eyes, which is going to be your raccoon eyes, or bruising behind the ears. That's going to be your battle signs, okay? But remember, all of these structures within that, uh, that basilar skull, we're going to have a lot of nerve endings here. We're going to have a lot of nerve ganglia that control you know, your senses, your hearing, your eyesight, your smell. So depending on the severity of these injuries, they might not develop the raccoon eyes and the battle signs for a while, but yet they've lost their hearing. They've lost their eyesight or their vision changes in some way. Uh, they could have weakness and or paralysis within the facial muscles because they've injured those, uh, those facial nerves within that section of the of the brain okay they could be fatigued tired dizziness headaches right the abnormal gait the you know coordination issues because of that uh that injury to the cerebellum right the the loss of consciousness and the memory loss these are two very big ones the more severe the injury the more severe of the basilar skull fracture the more traumatic brain injury you get, okay? So the more severe, typically the quicker loss of consciousness you have, okay? In super severe cases, uh, like if you guys remember back to 2001, 
you had the intimidator dale earnhardt uh a nascar driver get a uh, a lethal you know crash uh while racing at daytona and he actually suffered a basilar skull fracture and lost consciousness very quickly because of the severity of the uh of the skull fracture and then of course nausea vomiting because that's literally in everything that uh that we do so i want to go through the raccoon eyes and the battle signs so raccoon eyes here is what you're going to see now remember this could happen very quickly it could happen over a course of a period of time okay but your your battle signs and your raccoon eyes are going to develop because blood vessels are going to break within the brain and they're going to start forming pools of blood in certain you know certain areas of the brain from that basilar skull fracture okay the pooling of the blood for the raccoon eyes happens around the orbital bones okay so this is blood pooling from the inside uh, and now you're seeing it on the outside of the body the same thing with the battle signs okay something is going to happen with those uh, basilar bones near the temporal bones and that ear canal and you're going to start getting blood pooling around those those ear canals that i showed earlier and this is why you're going to see that bruising starting from uh you know behind the ears there so guys, in terms of treating basilar skull fractures, you're going to want to treat the signs and symptoms that you see. Airway management, breathing management, circulation management. Those ABCs are critical. We are not going to fix a basilar skull fracture, uh, you know, in the field. It needs surgery. It needs, you know, a higher level of care than we can provide in pre-hospital medicine. If there's bleeding, plug the hole, stop the bleeding, you know, bandage it and do your wound care and then focus on your ABCs, okay? There could be a lot of uh, variations in vital signs, respiratory rate and all those because of the brain stem uh, involvement in these injuries depending on the impact and where exactly those fractures have happened in those uh, basilar bones so just remember make sure that you're getting them to a trauma center make sure that you're you're doing your wound care and appro you know appropriately and you're doing your abcs effectively well guys that's it for today's video i hope you learned something about basilar skull fractures i'm gonna see you guys next tuesday